Hey guys, welcome to the video. In this video, I'm going to be fabricating the build platform for the new chassis I'm getting ready to make. Now I've jotted down the notes from the software. I've written down my uh, cut lengths and the angles that I need the perimeter of the base to be. I don't know if you can see that. I got that all off of the software, and if my printer was working, I would have just printed it out, but it's not, so I just jotted it down on some paper. The other day I went and picked up some steel at the uh, steel yard. I've already scrubbed it up with soap and water outside, um, really washed it up good. I do that because when you buy the steel, it comes with like an oily film on it, and if I don't completely scrub it you're just dirty for the rest of your life working with the steel so on projects like this when I get the steel home first thing I usually do is just totally scrub it down and then as you can see here right now I'm in the process of chopping up the pieces in the bandsaw so what I'm doing for starters is most of these pieces need miter cuts I did because a lot of this chassis is going to require miter cuts I did um, look up like metal cutting miter saws, not chop saws, I have a chop saw, but um, basically like a nice miter saw that you can put a steel cutting blade in. I looked those up and uh, I was thinking about buying one just to speed up this process, but you know, they were like 300 bucks and all of the reviews said that no matter what, the blades don't last that long. So I decided not to buy one yet. What I'm gonna do for now, and I'll see how much I hate it, is just do all the mitering in my bandsaw. It's a pain in the butt on the bandsaw because moving the, the miter gauge you know, is nuts and bolts and you gotta put a protractor on there to, to get the miter. But that's what I'm gonna do for now because I don't wanna go drop 300 bucks on a saw because I'm also dropping hundreds of dollars in steel. So, but anyways, to, uh, to make the miter cuts a little bit easier, what I'm doing is if I need a piece that's, let's say it's gonna be mitered and it's 15 and three quarters of an inch, I'll cut it 16 and a half inches or, or something just a little bit too long. And then I'll go back and do the miter cuts where I'm just cutting off little tiny pieces. Cause for me, that's a little bit easier to get nice accurate miters doing it that way. So what I'm doing right now is just ripping through everything and cutting the pieces that I need a little bit longer than they're going to be. Then I'm gonna go back and do all the miters. So that's what I'm in the middle of doing right now. As I'm cutting up my pieces, I'm taking the cut pieces, kind of staging them up over here. Got my TV playing some movies in the background. Got my notes. And then once I've got all these raw cuts made, I'll start doing all the miters and then we can start kind of putting things together and see what we got. So let's do some of that. And I'll probably talk back at you when I've got all the miters done and we can start laying things out and uh, tacking things together. I have now is I've cut out all the pieces um, I cut them like I said a, about an inch too long and now what I've done is I've gone through and mitered everything so this is like this first angle here is a 90 degree so these are both both 45s this one is a a four degree so I did a two and a two this one is I think a 28 so I went a 14 and a 14 and this one is a 58, so I went 29 and 29. Now, if you, you know, what I'm doing here is it starts this way and then it wraps all the way around, so it goes 180 degrees. So if you take all those angles and add them up, you get 180. And what I'm doing is I'm just following the, uh, the angles and the lengths that the Bentec software gave me. I'm gonna take this out to the garage. I'm just gonna take one of these side pieces, 
I'm going to take it up and I'm going to tack it together. Um, I'll clamp it on a piece of steel. I'll get the angles exactly what they need to be. I'll tack it. But then before I put on the straight pieces, this piece here, and this piece over here, once I get it tacked with the proper um, angles, I'm going to actually bolt it up underneath my existing chassis to see how accurate it seems because the the width of this should be pretty equal to the width of the uh, of the existing chassis and I believe this part I made it a little bit a couple more inches this way and a couple more inches this way so I'm gonna bolt this up in there and just kinda see where the front tire clearances and just check a couple of things if everything looks good then I'll take the other piece and I'll just clamp it to this piece and tack it in place so that these are both exactly the same then I'll probably solid weld these angles and then at that point I'll check my widths to make sure that that these two pieces are going to get me as wide as I need to be and then at that point I'll tack those together I've now got both of my side pieces tacked up. Uh, this is the one for the driver's side, but the one for the passenger side I've got over here. Now I've got it propped up in position here and I've already checked its angles against the angles of the body and it's right on. So then what I've done is I took, this is the back piece that uh, determines the width. I've got that marked out, centered, and jacked up in place and then I've got this jack here with a 2x4 under here so that I can set this right where it would go then up front here I've got another jack holding this end up and I've measured this distance to the center and then this is the piece that will actually that will actually go in the front there and this is what I used to determine uh, how far off of center I'm gonna be and basically the reason that I did that is I wanted to see you know I've got this mocked up under the chassis because I'm trying to see how it pans out for length and width and you can see for the length it's pretty good it's the way I have it here it's about three quarters of an inch longer that's okay I don't have a problem with that because there is a little bit taken off the rear there so I'm good with the length the width in the back is good and from what I can see on this corner here, because that inch and a half tube is going to go right here and it's going to be going up. And it looks like its width will match the width of this fiberglass front end pretty good. So there's going to be a piece coming straight up, basically going right through this line right here. And it seems to be a good width for the one piece front end. That that's what I was uh, initially worried about. So here's the deal guys. This video of me making the uh, the base for the tube chassis has been going on for about a week and a half. And I've, I've been trying to do it quicker than that but sometimes uh, I just get inundated with other things. Uh, I had to travel a little bit for work I needed to get the Ninja up and going so I changed the tires front and rear on that, changed the oil and then discovered that the water pump was leaking so I had to get a rebuild kit for that to tear that apart. And these aren't excuses, I'm not making excuses. You know, obviously I've got a couple of different toys here so occasionally you have to spread some attention to the different toys to keep them running. But what it does is it, it breaks up the flow when I'm trying to make these videos. So what happens is when I get towards the end of the video, like I am with the uh, base of the frame, I kind of lose my flow and, and I lose my rhythm as to how I'm making that video. So either way, I've, 
I've lost my flow on this video and I apologize for that. I want you guys to see how I'm making this bass because I, I think it's pretty important because I want to have a good bass so that if I want to try and replicate more of these chassis or make some tweaks or, or what have you, I'll be able to do it. So I'm going to show you what I've done so far. So what I have now is I have the base. This is it leaning up against the workbench. Um, it's welded all the way around and it's pretty square. It's not 100% square. I'm going to admit to that. It's if you measure from corner to corner, it's about a 16th, maybe 3.30 seconds off. Remember that is just inch and a half by inch and a half by 16 gauge square tubing. So it's really thin, really hard to control the straightness on something that big. To help true up the, the chassis base, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up some three inch by two inch rectangular tubing and I'm gonna create a base, let's call that a base for the base. So the purpose of this base is to basically set up the dimensions for the bottom of the tube chassis. The purpose of the base that I'm gonna be doing next is to hold this base square and level. And the way I'm going to make the other base, it will have the leveling feet. So when I set it on my garage floor, I can level it um, so that as I'm building the chassis, it'll be perfectly level and I can use a square and, and things like that or a level. So I can set a level on it when I'm setting bars up and all that. And it'll also just have, uh, it'll be solid because it'll be out of three inch by two inch rectangular tubing. And that'll make it easier to keep this straight and it will give it some strength strength, so that when I'm working on it, it it'll, be diff it'll be harder to uh, bend anything or warp it. So that's gonna be it for this video. This video has gotten too choppy. It's gone over about a week and a half and uh, I just need to stop it. Um, in the next video, I'll be doing the three by two rectangular, building the base for the base. Thank you guys for watching the video. I hope it's helping motivate you. I know that a lot of times what I go, what I do is I go inside and watch some YouTube videos, watch other people like myself working on stuff like this. It kind of motivates you and makes you feel like you're not on an island so much. What I mean by that is nobody around me in this neighborhood, none of my friends really are, you know, working on stuff like this. So you start to feel a little bit isolated, but if you watch channels like this and see other people doing things, you can see that it's uh that there's other people out there with interests like yours that are doing stuff like that. So hopefully it's motivating you guys to get you out working on your own stuff. And hopefully I see you in the next video. Take care.